Well, it's over from Ames, Iowa. Sooners get the win, but Iowa State did not make it easy on the Sooners. And I said it was going to be a game like this where the Sooners were not going to have the motivation to play it. It was going to be a little bit different not having Joe Mixon out there. And, of course, you don't have Samaje P. Ryan. Who knows when you'll get him back. So, really, the dimensions of the game changed, and the Sooners were going to have to find different ways to win, which we'll talk about in a second. But the Sooners um, winning the game, 34-24 remaining unbeaten in league play, knowing that the teeth of the schedule is, is coming soon. But at least you get the regular week to prepare for Baylor uh, in addition to the uh, two days uh, to prepare. So nine days of preparation for the Bears because you don't play another game until uh, November 12th. Um, but this was a game in which, again, no disrespect to Iowa State because they played this game like it was a playoff, like it was a college football playoff game. Their fans were very involved in the players from Iowa State. I thought, quite honestly, showed more emotion than the Sooners. And not that I'm excusing Oklahoma because you got to be ready to play every week, but there was, to me, a, a very high unlikelihood that the Sooners were going to show a lot of emotion because who gets excited to play in Ames, Iowa? Who? Not, not too many teams, okay? Not not too many teams. I mean, it's it's. I mean, if it weren't for Kansas, Iowa State would be the cellar dwellers of the Big Twelve, which is of course the weakest of the five major uh, conferences in college football. Kind of see where I'm going with this. It's again not the easiest thing in the world to you know run out of the tunnel and say, hey, let's go beat the Cyclones. I mean, six and two versus you know one and seven. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. It, it It's one of those things where mentally you can tell yourself, okay, we're ready to play. We're going to knock them off the field. But if you don't feel it, okay, if you don't feel it emotionally, then you're not going to play your best. And that's not to make excuses for Oklahoma. But you could tell late in the second quarter, down 21-17, to 17, when the two touchdowns that OU gave up were as a result of a blown coverage, Nobody was on Alan Lazard, and I don't think oh, you got the memo. Alan Lazard's a preseason Hall Conference wide receiver. Okay, very underrated receiver nationwide. And nobody was on the television screen wearing crimson and cream when Lazard caught that pass, much to my uh, puzzlement. And then the play that gave Iowa State uh, the lead temporarily, the uh, landing uh, 41-yard run on fourth and one. You know, they uh, used him, and they also used tonight uh, uh, Jacob. Uh, Park. So, but landing a very effective burn tonight, not so much as a passer. Uh, Park was a guy that completed the majority of his passes. But the good things you take away from a game like this, if you're the Sooners, besides the win, is the fact that when they were down, they didn't stay down long, and Mayfield found his favorite target, you know, D.D. Westbrook. I mean, that was the play in which got OU the lead right back. Um, Westbrook, by the way, tonight, seven catches, 131 yards. And a touchdown. Those numbers, by the way, are probably below average for him, considering how well he's played um, each of the last what four or five weeks ever since the TCU game. He's looked like one of the best receivers in the country. And Mayfield made an early mistake in the game, but other than that, was sensational in that first half with four touchdown passes. We found Jerry uh, Jeffrey Mead earlier in the game. Demetri Flyers. We're going to be talking about him plenty later on, and um, you know that that shows you that uh, Baker Mayfield um, was going to have a very good night. Because I, even though Iowa State knew there wasn't going to be Joe Mixon, it was still going to be hard for that Cyclone defense because of the talent discrepancy because OU runs that up-tempo offense so well to be able to contain the Sooners, even without a uh, fully healthy Sooner starting unit. Um, but you give it up to Baker Mayfield. It wasn't a great second half for the Oklahoma offense from the scoring perspective. But the one thing I will tell you, okay, one thing I'm going to tell you about football, as OU proved in the second half, there are many ways to play this game and win. Sooners had 37 minutes of time of possession. That means Iowa State only had the ball 23 minutes. You could tell that the Cyclones were tiring out toward the end of the game. Emotion alone cannot win you a game. Emotion alone can't do it. Got to have uh, plenty of gas in the tank. And it was reading close to E with the uh, little red light blinking on the um, on the dashboard of the Iowa State car because um, they just didn't have much all much left at all um, in their um, energy supply. 
37 minutes is what Oklahoma had the ball for the game, and they had the ball just about the entire second half. I mean, Iowa State didn't have too many chances. Um, even though the Sooners, I know, didn't score a second-half touchdown, even though I know they only had two field goals, they had three drives in that second half that ate up a ton of minutes, that ate up so much time. And, you know, it's, it's one of those games where obviously the Sooners are not playing to make Las Vegas happy. You know, the Sooners were a 20-and-a-half point favorite. They win uh, by a 10-point spread. Hey, they'll take that. They'll take that with no Joe Mixon, you know, with, with P. Ryan still um, nursing the um, leg muscle injury. Um, the Sooners will take the W, even if it wasn't pretty, even if they didn't get any second-half TDs. You don't mind as long as you take care of business. And Dimitri Flowers, um, he was the option tonight, the main option. We saw early Abdul Adams, you know, average about six and a half yards per carry off only eight carries. But the Sooners in the second half needed a tough running back, uh, running back with plenty of muscle, a running back that's going to be hard to bring down and yet could attack the hole uh, but the offensive line would supply. And the offensive line, again, played terrific. I thought their run blocking was excellent in a game like this, even though I know it was only 149 yards of total rushing. But in the second half, you could tell, um, after a lot of Baker Mayfield throwing, it was less Baker Mayfield throwing in the second half and try to score touchdowns by running the ball more than he did in the first half. That formula didn't work, but still, there are many ways to play this game and win. And the Sooners played this game with the mentality to win via the ground attack. And you'll take that if you're a Sooner fan. And the defense, I thought the tackling was, was, again, poor, especially in the first half, and no accountability at all for the Alan Lazard score, again, in which nobody was covering him. And then the Joe Landing 41-yard touchdown run of 4th and 1, inexcusable. Second half played much, much better. And remember, Iowa State only had 290 total yards in this game, but that was predominantly because the OU offense held the ball for so long and didn't allow the Iowa State offense to get on the field as frequent. Um, 290 total yards for Iowa State. The Cyclones only um, had 130 yards rushing and a mere 160 yards uh, through the air. And Alan Lazard, um, a terrific receiver, had six catches, a touchdown, but was limited to 76 yards through the air. So I give it up to the Sooners. And you know what? There was a uh, there was a Dakota Austin sighting tonight. There was. And you saw him make a big breakup on third down in the second half when Iowa State was trying to um, cut that OU deficit. But Austin made a terrific breakup on a big third down play in that second half. And that shows you that uh, he definitely has missed being out there uh, with his teammates. And uh, it's nice to see that Mike Stoops um, had him back out there. Of course, we saw him uh, plenty early in the year, but struggled. Um, when you have the ball again for 37 minutes, um, you can do so many things in the game. You can just keep giving it to Demetrius Flowers, who we know he doesn't have the speed of Joe Mixon or the build of a Joe Mixon, but in terms of strength, kind of like a Samaje P. Ryan, okay? A guy that will just keep chugging after the first hit, after the second hit. Best part about Demetrius' game, he keeps those legs moving. And, you know, how about that last um, meaningful carry that he had? On third down, which it looked like he was going to be stopped short of a first with time running out and the Sooners uh, trying to get into victory formation and Flowers' second, third, fourth effort, and he crossed the first down marker, and the Sooners were, you know, able to eliminate the final couple minutes of uh, game clock. Um, so the Sooners remain unbeaten in uh, Big 12 play, six and zero, seven and two overall. And one thing that was was said, I want to bring this up just so there's no misunderstanding about how I feel. The Sooners are not going to the college football playoff, okay? I know what people are thinking. Well, they're ranked close to the top 10. That's what the AP and what the coaches poll says, and they're 14th in the actual college football playoff poll. The problem with the Sooners, number one problem is, name me Oklahoma's best win this season. Name me their best win. Probably Kansas State. And that's not going to hold water, okay? And I know that the next three games coming up are against top 20 teams, but none of those opponents, Baylor, West Virginia, or Oklahoma State, are national championship contenders. It wasn't like last year when you beat Baylor, who was sixth in the country, and then you beat a top 20 team at TCU, and then you beat a highly ranked Oklahoma State team, and you won two of those three on the road, and you just overwhelmed the committee, especially with how you closed the season out in Bedlam by beating the Cowboys by five touchdowns, okay? 
the biggest problem the Sooners are going to have is right now their resume. I know Ohio State's damn good still with one loss, and the Sooners lost to them early in the year. The Houston loss doesn't look all that impressive. It did a few weeks ago, but Houston's lost a couple of games. Again, the Sooners are hurt by the fact that the Big 12 is not a playoff contending conference. Last year, you can make that argument. And the fact that the Sooners' best win so far this year is against Kansas State. I mean, it's, it's not against Texas Tech. I mean, Texas Tech is just average. And Kansas State, by the way, they're not in the top 25, not even close. And, you know, Texas, they won last week against Baylor just to be at 4-4. Four and four. Um, Again, you keep going to the list. TCU has already lost four games, too. See where I'm getting at? The committee will look at your resume and grant the teams coming up, give the Oklahoma Sooners an opportunity to move up, but they're not going to catapult everybody else in the process unless all those teams ahead of them lose. And even then, the Sooners are still going to have a hard time because they play in the damn Big 12 Conference. I think more than that, that prohibits the Sooners from getting to the college football playoff. Is it impossible? Maybe that's a strong word, but I would say virtually impossible that the Sooners are going to go to any college football playoff. And tonight's a win. But you think the committee was impressed by the Sooners and beating Iowa State by a mere 10 points? I'm sure almost all the committee members weren't even watching this game. If so, then I guess they don't like the NFL <laughs> when they feel like it's their job to watch OU Iowa State. But the bottom line is that the Sooners, this year's team, I think the best they could do is win the Big 12, get their ass to the Sugar Bowl, possibly play Texas A&M, which would be fun because it would be Baker Mayfield against Trevor Knight. Still a lot of games away from that. And I know people are going to disagree and think that the Sooners are going to get in the college football playoff like those two ESPN announcers at the end of the game. I know the other the, the commentary was Jesse Palmer. Um, to me, it's a pipe dream that the Sooners are going to make any college football playoff, you know, even if they win the next three games by six or seven touchdowns apiece. The Big 12 hurts them, and the fact that their resume so far – um, really doesn't really doesn't overwhelm you at all with um, with impressiveness. Sears are going to try to win the Big 12, and I think that's the best they can do, and at least play in a major bowl game. But it won't consist of a semifinal game. OU gets the win. It wasn't pretty, but then again, I didn't think it was going to be. They beat Iowa State, who played hard, but the play of Baker Mayfield in the first half and the hard running. Fantastic run blocking, did the job. Um, Demetri Flowers in that second half was something else. Boomer Sooner.